Good morning. Now, I'm just going to tell you at the outset that we are having a lot of ice and uh, freezing rain. I don't know the difference in sleet and freezing rain. Let me see if I can tell me that. So, anyway, we're having that today. So, I don't know, you know, if we'll uh, have good broadcast, if that's what you even call it. I, I don't know if my Wi-Fi is going to hold up. I guess that's what I'm trying to say, but... Uh, <clears throat> I just want to let you know ahead of time that if this cuts off, then I'll go to my cell phone because sometimes that's better. So, uh, all of you who are who are watching today, um, it is Saturday the 13th, the day before Valentine's, and it is a cold and icy, icy day here in... <laughs> here in... Uh, DC. Where do I live? Here in DC. My my dog, there's a cracker that my dog wants and it's on the floor and he can't seem to catch it because when he gets to it, it scoots away from him. So in a minute, maybe I'll pitch him over in the den with Steve. All right. So as promised, we're going to have a little bit of Valentine's breakfast, Valentine's Day celebration. It's a tea. And so I have, let me show you what I have. I have set up here for just me, sadly. Uh, you know, this nice little setup. And so I wish with all my heart that my whole house was set up and waiting for you. And we were going to have a big Valentine's breakfast or tea. But uh, you know what? This is uh, a really close second for me. Uh, I will tell you that this morning when I got up and I fixed that uh, uh, platter full of little treats, um, I uh, fixed this for myself. It's just a cool whip and some berries with sugar on top. And um, I was like, oh, that is so pretty. I've got to remember that the next time I have something. And it's not only pretty, but I began eating it and I ate the whole thing. So I had to run in there real quick and, and do another one. And so I highly recommend this recipe. It came to me, you know, just in a vision uh, of a cloud of Cool Whip and some berries on top. All right. So today we're going to continue talking about love. We're going to continue talking about love. The scarf that I have on this morning, isn't that beautiful? Dollar Tree, isn't that wonderful? Dollar Tree, it's just, I went in there not too long ago and it was just like, gosh, but you have to be careful because sometimes you're looking at, oh my gosh, they have Fabuloso for a dollar. Yeah, but it's like this much Fabuloso, but they did have this beautiful scarf, so I'm going to quit complaining about them. So tomorrow is Valentine's Day. It looks like we will not have in sanctuary service I'm going to say that again. It looks like we will not have in sanctuary service because it's supposed to be icy all night and then super cold tomorrow. But then kind of, uh, well, actually tomorrow like 40. So hopefully it'll all melt away because next week it looks like there's another round of this stuff coming in. This morning they were all about the mid-Atlantic. And by the way, that's where I live. Uh, some people, you know, when I'm watching the Weather Channel, I'm listening to the North, and sometimes we're included in the North, but we're also Mid-Atlantic. All right, enough, enough. All right, so, happy Valentine's Day. We will not have class tomorrow because it's Sunday, and we will not have class on Monday because I'm taking a break the month of February on Monday and just seeing um, that might become kind of a permanent thing, but... Uh, we're seeing, but um, don't worry about me if I'm not here on Monday morning. That means I am just taking the day off. Okay, so scriptures on love. Stories about love. There are so many wonderful love stories in the Bible, aren't there? The story of Ruth and Boaz. I love that story. I, I love the way it works out because here's this young Moabite that meant she worshipped idols and she would have gone to that temple and she marries this 
this Jew, and uh, then he dies, and she doesn't have any children, and she's brokenhearted. She goes to her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law is like, you know, go back. <clears throat> I don't have any more children for you. Go back to your mother and your daddy. And she says, no, wherever you go, that's where I want to go. You know, it's funny to me, and I think about it all the time when I'm performing a wedding or when I'm part of a wedding party. And that is the thing that we say at weddings that is so special, so just heartwarming, is we say, you know, wherever you go, that's where I'm going to go. And, and where you live, that's where I want to live. And, and the God that you worship, that's who I'm going to worship. That was originally said by a young woman to her mother-in-law. I mean, there are millions of mother-in-law jokes. Millions of them. But this story of, of her saying to her mother, of Ruth saying to Naomi, <clears throat> no, I'm not going back. I'm going with you. Because wherever you are, I, that's where I want to be. When Steve and I had our 25th wedding anniversary, we renewed our vows 25 years ago. 25 years ago. What I said to him, my vows to him were, all my life, wherever you've gone, I've gone. And your children are my children. And your God is my God. And that's who I've been serving with you for 25 years. And now I can say it for 50 years. For 50 years. I know without a shadow of a doubt that the reason that I've been with this man and he's been with me and he's not left me nor forsaken me is because we have always put God first in our life and because we absolutely are over the moon in love with each other. Stephanie says to her children, uh, or and sometimes to us, when we're getting ready to be apart from each other, hey, remember, I love your guts and livers. And I said to her one time, I don't even know what that means. And she said, I don't either, but I really love you. Or I don't know, but I really love my children. I don't know, but I really love my husband. So however we are going to say it to someone today or tomorrow or for the next 50 years, make sure that God is in that equation. Make sure that God is in that equation. You see, I know how to love my husband because I know how God has loved me. I know how to forgive in my marriage because God has forgiven me. I know how to ask for forgiveness in my marriage because I can go to God and I can ask forgiveness and I get it not some of the time, but every time. God never goes on a pity party or a pout party with us. Never. He's always standing there with his arms outstretched. Just think about that. No matter what we're doing, no matter where we are, his arms are always outstretched. And it's unconditional. Jeremiah 31.3. Jeremiah 31.3. The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I'm going to love you, Jeremiah. I'm going to love you the whole time you're here on earth. Jeremiah, I'm going to love you when you're up in heaven with me. Jeremiah, I loved you before you were even born. Jeremiah, I love you. Philip, God has loved you from before you were born, when you were a little guy, when I knew you, when you are this wonderful grown man now. God loves you with an everlasting love. God loves us with an everlasting love. What an incredible thought today. Because some of you, on Valentine's Day, you think about people 
who maybe you spent Valentine's with before, and they said, I'm going to love you forever, and then they didn't. They didn't. Or maybe you're thinking about ways that you have spent Valentine's with people, and you've said, I'm going to love you forever, but you didn't. But you didn't. You see, with God, it's not just on February the 14th that he looks at you and he says, I love you with all my heart. It's every day, every minute. When your feet hit the floor in the morning, God looks over and he says, there's my girl. There's my guy. I love them so much. And I think he looks over at God and he says, look at what we created. No wonder we love them so much. No wonder when we look into their eyes, we love them so much. That's why when we look at God, we look at him as our savior, as our provider, as the one who rescued us from a life of sin, from a life of sin, from sure damnation. But instead, we look at him and we say, no, I'm going to have everlasting life because he has everlasting love. John 16, 27. John 16, 27. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. Uh, let, me, let me just, let me tell you something. If somebody really, really loves my kids, I love them. If somebody really loves my kids, I just love them. On the contrary, if somebody gets up in my, the face of my kids, well, then they're going to have to deal with me. I don't care if they're 46 years old. 46, 44, 42, 40. My kids are all in their 40s now, which kind of breaks my heart. Right? It doesn't matter to me. They're going to get a face full of me. Just because we love Jesus... It says, God himself loves you because you've loved Jesus. Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners? Yeah. Yeah. Before we ever, before we ever came to him, he died for us. Before we ever uttered, I love you, protect me, he died for me. He knew what a mess I was. Years ago, I went to a conference that Beverly Mason spoke at. And she said one of the funniest things. She said that her mother told her that she really, really needed to get saved when she was young. And she really, really needed to stay under God's anointing because she, her, her mother was afraid that she really had the uh, capabilities of, of getting into some wild stuff. Now, if you know Beverly, I cannot imagine that. But I cannot also imagine, I can't imagine Beverly not being saved. I can't imagine Beverly not being my prayer partner. I can't imagine Everly ever not sitting under her anointed voice, her anointed singing, and just being blessed through Beverly Mason. You see, I don't know what we would be like. I don't know what we would be like because he died before we were ever even born, before we had ever even sinned. He didn't wait to see, are they going to need a Savior? Are they going to need a Savior? No, before any of us were ever even born, 
our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents, all the way back as far back as as I know of, before any of us were even born, God knew we're going to need it. Those people are going to need a savior. Because I, I think they could really get in some trouble. When I was a teenager, my mother had this rule about dating. She had a lot of rules about dating. But one of them was, they had to be boys from our church. They had to be boys from our church. Now, before you think that's, what, is she Amish? Uh, okay, I went to North Cleveland. And there was a wide selection of good-looking boys to choose from. A big selection of good-looking boys to choose from, from North Cleveland, from South Cleveland, from, I mean, Church of God. She included Church of God, I think. But they had to be a part of our church. Because she wanted them, you know, to be Christian. She wanted to know their parents. She wanted to know all about them. And uh, so that was her role. And uh, I, I dated a couple of boys who weren't from our church. And um, <laughs> I was really felt like I was on the wild side. Now, let me remind you, I started dating Steve when I was 16 years old. So there wasn't a lot of dating before Steve. There was not a lot of dating before Steve. But I had little boyfriends. I mean, you know. I had little boyfriends. I had some options. Steve wasn't my only option. He was just my best option. And so, I dated a couple of those boys. And he was alright. Nothing bad happened. But God sets these standards. And he puts these standards in place... For us, mom did that for my protection, for my safety. I came from a small town, but come on, it wasn't that small. Lots and lots of beautiful young men in that town. Mom wanted to make sure that I was making a good choice. Maybe mother recognized from the first She's probably going to marry young. I want to marry somebody good. And I did. With mom and dad's blessings. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. He so loved. He so loved. He so loved. Just say to yourself, For God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son that when I believed in him, I will not perish, but I will have everlasting life. For God so loved me. For God so loved you, Regina, that he gave his only begotten son. Regina, I love you so much, but I would not give up one of my sons for you. But God so loved you, Regina, that he gave his only begotten son so that when you believed in Jesus Christ, you would not perish, but that you would have everlasting life. I'm going to tell you, that includes life here on earth. Good life, full life, sweet life, satisfying life, life full of treats, life full of cool whipping berries, Life full of good friends. Life full of people who love you. Life full of joy. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's an icy, rainy day. But you're safe inside. You're warm. I wonder if you have dogs barking in your house. 
because I sure do. I do not know why. They're standing at the door crying like I'm not just right here. Max, I'm over here. Here I am. For God so loved you. For God so loved me. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him would not perish, would not perish, but would have ever, everlasting life. Today, I hope you've had a little treat to eat. Let me just show you. Um, I made kind of like a, <clears throat> like a, what do you call those? Uh, almond joy, but without the almond. Mm. Can't think what's called now. Coconut, chocolate. I made kind of one of those. I had the chocolate icing left over from a cake I made yesterday. And I put it on top of a little cranberry muffin that I, that I bought yesterday at BJ's. So, and then I sprinkled coconut on top. So I've got that. What is that called? I can't remember. Beverly, what is that called? And then I made some little strawberry shortcakes out of the same little cranberry muffin with, oh, mounds, thank you, Pamela. Um, I made um, this little uh, cranberry cupcake, uh, well, I mean muffin. What's the difference in a cupcake and a muffin except the icing? Nothing, nothing. Uh, you just feel good. Don't you feel good about yourself? You say, oh, I had, a, I had a muffin. I had a carrot muffin for breakfast. Why don't you just say I had carrot cake, but I missed the icing. I mean, honestly, Justin, our grandson Justin, he and I have this argument all the time. All right, so then I've got Cool Whip on top of that. But then, I'm telling you, my favorite is this Cool Whip and blackberries and raspberries. So delicious. He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There have been times when I have been in the presence of my enemies and I thought, I wish God would just show up right now and spread a feast. I do. Listen, my, my ultimate, yeah, chocolate cake. Yeah, I, I made chocolate cake yesterday. That's why I have a little bit of icing left over. Let me just say something about homemade chocolate icing. Homemade chocolate icing. You get a spoon. You dip it in your peanut butter. Then you dip it in that chocolate icing. And it is, I think, I think Dion calls it the bomb diggity. I'm going to call it whatever. It is so good. When God spreads a table before uh, before you in the presence of your enemies, that means, well, my enemies think they've got the upper hand. My enemies think I'm not being provided for. My enemies think I don't have any provision in my life. And then they turn around and they look and God has spread a table. He has blessed me. He has given me this incredible amount of love he's given me all of you my enemies my enemy may have looked at me you know last February you know I was eating downtown at Bilbo Baggins my favorite restaurant to eat Steve and I were having the best time it was it was a big special event and oh Dion I was just talking about you and so oh Kelly's eating biscuits. Yay. And Elaine has some leftover birthday cake. Yay. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> so last year, that's what we had. And this year, we're not even going to be able to get out because it's bad. I've already told Steve, but we're not getting out tomorrow. It's just too icy. It's just too icy. I just don't, you know, we've got four wheel drive. It's just too icy. And then I got to thinking about how he spreads a table before me. He spreads a table before me. I'm going to put that dog in there with Steve because I don't know what they think is in there, but before I take communion, I want to get rid of that distraction. So just talk amongst yourselves. 
All right, come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on, Hans. Come on. Go, boy. And they're gone. <clears throat> so I think when we sit down at the communion table, I think when we sit down at the communion table, it's a feast. It's a blessing. 100% he comes in and he satisfies us. He satisfies us with long life. He told his disciples, every time you sit down to eat together, they were at a feast. They were at a meal. He said, every time you sit together and you take that bread and you tear it or you break it, every time you sit down to a feast or every time you sit down to eat or every time you guys get together and, and you have coffee and you have a muffin, or a cup cake. Every time you do that, I want you to think about me. I want you to remember me. And, and think about the things I've provided think in your life. Your enemy might be looking and saying, they're, they're lacking. But God is saying, what? What? I've provided for them. I've provided for them. I was looking at all of these pretty dishes and all of these things I have on this table this morning and everything was given to me, I think. I think everything was given to me. Emma Jean Walsh gave me that little teapot. Um, I think this came from Sherry's house. Uh, I know this came from Sally's house. Um, John and Lisa gave me this little set one year for Christmas. Um, what else? Uh, I don't remember who gave me this little napkin, but somebody did. One year when we were on a ladies retreat up in um, <clears throat> Lancaster, uh, we went into a little shop and I don't know if Marion bought me this, but I'm gonna tell you, I always give credit to Marion for buying me this little cat creamer. Isn't it the cutest little thing? Look how God has just set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Look at, look at all the love this table represents. This very table was my mother and dad's table. It was an antique table that they bought, that they refinished, and that they set up every morning of their life. This chair that I'm sitting in came from my mother's house. I had it reupholstered, but this chair came from mama's house. That chair back there... That beautiful chair, I got my finger pointing the right way, that came out of Steve's grandmother's house. He sets a table before me. Yeah, it's nasty outside, but I'm here surrounded by love. You are surrounded by love. No matter where you are, no matter what you're eating off of, no matter if you're eating one of Kenny's donuts or something else, you are surrounded by love. And God has made sure that's going for you. We have to accept it. We have to believe it. And so every time we take this communion, every time we break bread with one another, and we are this morning, as surely as you're sitting here at my table in one of my other beautiful chairs that came from Mama's house, he sets a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Every time you do this, think about me. Remember me. So let's break that bread. And remember that we are taking the healed body of Jesus Christ into our bodies. Raina, you are taking the healed body of Jesus Christ into your body. I love the Lord so much. I love the Lord so much.
it says after they had finished their meal that in like manner that in like manner he served the wine so whatever you have that you're taking with today he served that wine he served that juice he said this is my blood it's going to be shed for you but there's going to be healing in my blood there's deliverance in my blood there's cleansing in my blood let's take the juice blood of Jesus. He takes care of me. It washes me. It heals me. Father, in your holy and sweet name, we come before you today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the love that we have with one another. I thank you for the outpouring of love that takes place during this Bible study, but during every minute of our lives, because Lord, all we have to do is reach out our hands and receive it. I thank you, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'm always thinking that when Jesus returns, and right now that's all Steve and I are talking about. I mean, we are reading books to each other, and <clears throat> listen, we're not we're not really that kind of couple all the time, but right now we are. And we're talking about the rapture and the second coming and all these other uh, events <clears throat> that Steve is going to preach on tomorrow. And, and in my mind, it's going to be a sunny, bright day. And then all of a sudden, the clouds are just going to explode. And there will be Jesus riding triumphantly. That's second coming. I'm not talking about rapture. I'm talking about second coming. But what if today on this, and, and I know it's not raining everywhere, but what if today on this icy, cold, dreary, rainy day, what if we were just sitting here eating our treats and all of a sudden we weren't. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, one second enjoying communion with sweet, sweet friends, and then with him in glory. What if? What if? Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, you do not want to miss Steve's message. You do not. I'm praying for you. I'm loving you. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, service. It will be virtual. Virtual only. And then, Monday morning, I'm still on my break. So, Monday morning, no Bible study. But, Tuesday morning, I will see you right here at 10 o'clock. God bless you. I love you. Happy Valentine's Day.